you're not quiet enough. Damn it. We're on. Hello and welcome to episode 154 of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. I'm Patricia Steer and you already heard him. It's Mark Sargent. Hey, Mark. Hello. And I'm, I'm, my name is actually Robert Paulson. I thought we were all Mark Sargent. Didn't we determine <laughs> that last show? If everybody else is Mark Sargent, then I've got to be Robert Paulson. And that's an inside joke, sort of. Um, it comes from the uh, Infinite Plain Society, IPS. And he went to do a speech at a city council meeting about revealing the truth about Flat Earth. And yep. um, anyway, he said, I'm Mark Sargent. And then he corrected himself. And it was pretty funny. Yep. For those who don't know, check his channel. In Albuquerque, of all places. Yeah, Albuquerque. One you of those really... few, few cities you have to look up the spelling because nobody gets it the first time. You know what? I don't think I'm, I'm going to try now. You know, I never really knew that people actually lived in Albuquerque. I thought it was just a hoax. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a, a L B E R. No, A L B E K. I fail. Q, Q no. <laughs> Wow, I can't spell Albuquerque. You ready? Well, nobody can. Okay, here, I'll do it. I know people are looking it up right now. A-L-B-U-Q-U-E-R-Q-U-E. -E -E. It's ridiculous. That nobody is. can. Yeah. yeah. Albuquerque. -que um, it's probably a native term, a native name. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Native Americans. <sighs> You got to hand it to the Native Americans. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, I grew up partially in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and I believe the word Kalamazoo has some meaning that can be traced back to pot of boiling water. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a really great. I'm from a pot of boiling water. <laughs> nice to meet you. Not nearly as good as shaking big fist or. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Probably actually, I was born in uh, Washington State in uh, in Spokane, and okay. I bet Spokane has some native term meaning, right? Maybe Spokane. I've been there. Well, I've been there for basketball camps back in the day. It's kind of nothing. I mean, I'm, that's an insult to Spokane. It's not known for anything specific, right? It's not really known for anything. Right. It's just a town in eastern Washington, on the furthest eastern edge of, right. of Washington. I yeah. mean, my family left there when I was less than a year old, so. Yeah. Well, we better start talking flat earth or our critics will say, All right, no, right, right, right. I listened to the show and they didn't talk about flat earth once. We, we promise we'll talk about flat earth at least twice during this, at least twice. When you hear us talk about it, count. <laughs> to, redu <laughs> <laughs> to reduce feedback, by the way, Mark is now sporting a pair of oh, headphones. Oh, headphones. Nice. Maybe I should turn my volume down to reduce feedback even more. Well, no, no. You'll yeah. probably be fine on your side. You know, we didn't have it until last week, and then last week it's like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, it, if, it, if it loops, so I'm going to stop. This stops the looping, so you won't have to worry about it. Headphones like that hurt my ears a lot. Because when you talk, when I... When I whatever, it's going to reduce it. It'll be fine. You're fine. Okay, I'm fine. Yeah. Thank You're you. Fine. You know, my mom always told me I was fine. Hey... Um, You'll be fine, Patty. <laughs> I, I don't want to be anal retentive, and I know there's yeah. a joke in there somewhere, Ooh. but your uh, I think your cat's bumped one of your pictures behind you there, and oh. uh, and it's crooked by the jukebox. Wow, there's more than one picture crooked. Hold on. Nathan Oakley will be... I, could, I couldn't see the other one be, because, oh, of your, right. because of your hair. My big head? <laughs> I wasn't going to say that about you. It's, All right, I'll fix it. Hold on. As far as you know. While Patricia is going back to adjust the set, which most of the time is... I feel like Vanna White, like, you know how adjust the letters? Like... You know, it's very, it's very deceiving because I, I never realized those pictures were that big. Yeah, they're pretty big. They're, I mean, there's an album and then, yeah. I mean, I always thought the wall was fairly close behind you, but apparently it's pretty ways back there. Mm, I think it's just... Perspective, <laughs> that magic word. <laughs> no, seriously, I could almost see the curve of the earth when you went back there. I think it's still crooked, but good enough? Good That's enough good. for rock that, and roll? That, that, that'll, that'll work. Good yeah. enough for rock and roll? That is not even a saying. And I just good. made it one. See, what happens is the cats, they jump up on this. Uh, oh, my God, I can't even think of what that's called. <laughs> Guitar oh. case. <laughs> wow. And then they paw, and then it's domino effect so nice all right so we've talked about perspective that's flat earth oriented so we'll count yeah. that as one <laughs> let me go into chat and say hello 
and see what people are talking about and what people are doing. Uh, we've got uh, someone named Muppet Show here. Uh, Martin Leadkey is here, Swamp Lover. Chris Topher <laughs> says, guitar. No, guitar case. That was the thing. Uh, Wombra as well. Pale Queens. Um, let's see. Perrin Greenway. Um, Brad Ballgood says, wow, they sure got good with the green screens. <laughs> uh, uh, Teen Eldridge is here. Ben John says, God damn, Patricia. <laughs> well, I don't know why, but all right. Um, Chris Topher as well says, is, is there an F? Probably when I was being Vanna White. Stock Jockey as well. Stock Jockey says, it's important to have flat alignment in the background and no curve. Uh, let's see. You actually get a budget for a set. That's what kills me. Yeah, right, right. Um, Nathan I, Oakley I, I says, Nathan says, I didn't realize Patricia had legs. <laughs> Ah, uh, let's see, Markovsky, hello to Alex and John Watson and Knowledge Scavenger and Cathesius. Oh, you know, we did a little email exchange or message exchange and I asked how you pronounce the name and he told me and I didn't remember. Uh, Quaalude Charlie is here, Jonathan Doherty is here, um, F.E. Mex, Ben John. And Ben says, I'm tired of seeing Mark holding a globe mic. I'll pay for him to have a more phallic mic. LOL. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. See, I'm going to, I'm in trouble either way. Cause if I hold a phallic mic, it'd be something like this. Right. And then would you rather. So that me... does have a stand on it, but you'd need a short table in front of you. Well, yeah, but you know me, I, but, cause what's going to happen is I'm going to talk and I'm going to be like, you know, and. That's not going to work. So I, I have to hold the mic. I, I know it probably, if it was silver, would people like it better? I don't know. People, here's, Here, the, thing about, about, here's the thing about what people will like with anybody who puts themselves out there. And that means on YouTube, movies, TV, if you're a writer, if you're a, a street painter, whatever you do, you put yourself out there and somebody's going to have a problem with it. So in the end, you have to please yourself. I like this microphone. There you it's go. Not, it's not blue. And look, it's it was used in, it's a prop. It is a standard prop in Doctor Who currently. Used so there by, you go. Used by the Ood. That's the how, uh, you know, BBC is not known for high budget productions. And they use this microphone, this casing as a, as a, you guys can look this up. Type in uh, Doctor Who, uh, U-U-D, the Ood. And they, they talk through this. It's kind of like a translation device. Very interesting. I've only seen short periods of episodes of the very original Doctor Who. So um, you, you haven't seen it since it was rebooted with Christopher yeah. Eccleston, and no. then really no. Mm. Oh, yes. mm. Mm -mm. Yeah. Um, I want to say hi to Ukdina Walker. Haven't heard from her for a while. So Ginger Sugarbush as well, and Test Vision Alan Buchanan, and Luis Torres, who says make a left at Albuquerque. <laughs> Uh, that's Jim, you know what that's from no that's a deafy or no that's a bugs bunny reference i was gonna say oh, Duck. you know that makes sense makes sense because he's um, giving directions it's like oh yeah you take a left at albuquerque i got it i got it uh let's see i was saying wait something there's here. a there's a new mexico <laughs> yeah it's new Seriously. and improved um also x stranger xx is here pale queens maybe mentioned already ryan in north carolina says much love to you all and um I need to look something up in a conversation that we had last night on Skype because there's somebody I want to say hello to and I wrote their name to, or I wrote their name within our Skype conversation and so I would remember. Aha, let's see. I want to say hi to Reverend Shane. Uh, Reverend Shane called in. He's from Michigan and he called into your 100th episode uh, of your show last night on TFR, Truth Frequency Radio, and the show's called Strange World. 100 episodes. Congratulations. Thank you. You know it's a clean show when a reverend calls in. Yes, exactly. So he's from Michigan, and he got one of those, um, you know what, I'm having trouble remembering things. Uh, the, the, the things that you use that are lasers to do the moonlight test. What's the name of those? Oh, oh uh, infrared therm point yeah. and click infrared thermometer. He was talking about that on the show last night. Now he got one. He's going to do the test. Also, yes, um, a guy named Jimmy Chu or yep. Jimmy Shu. I wasn't sure which, but I, I've seen someone named Jimmy Shu, and he said, have Patricia shout me out. And there you go. Uh, birthday wishes. Yes. Uh, let's see. 
Let's see. Let's see. Another guy whose name, he was a painter, Van, Van Painter. Oh, We're right. To that person as well. So Right. The Van and, down by the river. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So we've taken care of business every day here by going into chat. And maybe we'll go back and do that at a future date. But what's going on in Flat Earth? Uh, well, I had a funny, actually an interesting flat earth story because I was celebrating birthdays with the family over the weekend. Down Your the birthday is coming up and Carly yeah. Sunshine's birthday is coming up. So not for uh, a little while, but yeah. Yeah. And so what had happened was, you know, cause listeners will send me quite a bit of stuff. I've gotten everything from cookies to Bibles to electronics, you, to, you name it. To cookies um, that look yeah. like Bibles. You know. Exactly. Exactly. A uh, flash drives that are not edible like cookies the i'm not what am i being subliminal here by saying cookies cookies the um anyway this was sent by a, a guy jj dawes he everyone i get people to send me music all the time mm -hmm. and another guy who sent me music and i gotta mention this to you i don't know if i told you this one where he sent me music and he's also a convert a flat earth convert and like with a lot of flat earth converts he's given up all things space do you know what? And do you know what he had? He sent me, and, and it was cool. It was really cool. Was a bumper sticker from 1984, when, and I know you're not old enough to remember this, <laughs> but when John Glenn ran for president in 1984. You know what? I don't really he, even he, remember John Glenn running for president. He was one of the minor players. He didn't make it all the way to the yeah. to the end. You know, obviously, but he was a state senator, I believe, for Ohio. And you guys can look this up. Mm -hmm. Anyway, apparently this guy that, that's doing music now, he used to be a hot dog vendor back in the 80s <laughs> Wow! Out, outside of the state capitol in Ohio, where John Glenn was. And John Glenn comes out, well, you know, you, know, you pass by the same guy all the time, and I don't know exactly how the story went down, but he had a bumper sticker and he signed it. John Glenn autographed the back of the bumper sticker. So he never used it. You know, it was just you know, it was the peel off stuff was still there. Anyway, when he became a flat earther, he gave it up. He gave up all things space. He just, you know what? This John Glenn thing's useless to me now. You can have it. And I'm thinking, wow, you know, under normal circumstances, this would be a kind of a cool find, especially since John Glenn just passed away in December. Yes. And uh, John Glenn is the thumbnail of our video right now. Uh, I did not. Even, I did yes. not even realize that. Yes. Um, How's that for weird? Uh, it was created by D I T R H, and it says uh, NASA drain the pool on it. <laughs> so, nice. And it's so, got uh, John like in a, in a helmet and pool water. Per well, perfect. A perfect story for that. Total coincidence that that I, I'm bringing this up because I hadn't actually seen the thumbnail yet. And so I gave it to my brother-in-law for his birthday because his birthday is usually is one day after mine. And I wasn't going to be down there for, for the 25th. And he thought it was the greatest thing since sliced bread because he still believes in space. And he's old enough that John Glenn was one of his heroes. And so, yeah, he's heard about the flatter thing, but he's not, not on board yet. But the fact, but, but my point was, it, and he, he, I was trying to get it to sink into him. I was like, look, man, people that convert to flat earth, they give up. Anything that has to do with space becomes irrelevant. Your, your shining moment where you may have shaken hands with, shaken or shook? Shaken? Shook hands? Shook hands with Neil Armstrong? Pff, worthless. And anything, anything, all, any book that was written by an astronaut. And I'm sorry to say that Stanton Friedman, who had his for the last book he wrote with, with opening forward by an astronaut, worthless. So I thought that was interesting that this guy, you know, when he became when he became a flat earther, he immediately. I mean, it was worth something that day. I don't know how much an autograph John Glenn official running for president bumper sticker goes for, but it's got to be a little bit. Yeah, I bet. And I think a lot of us have given up aspects of space, given up things that they thought were. You couldn't have it around the house because it made you so mad or duped to have these things, you know, like, uh, I don't know, movies. People can't watch the movies anymore. I, I'm Star one of those Trek, guys. Star Wars. It just bugs me. I have a hard time. Now, I did go see Rogue One, but just for the for the plot. But the uh, – spoiler alert, everybody dies. The <laughs> – Literally everybody dies. And you realize that when you go into it because you realize that if you remember the old movies, if you're a geek, it's like nobody made it out. Every, everybody that... Now, isn't Rogue One a, prelude, a prequel? Prequel. I almost said prelude. A prequel to 
at all? To, well, not to it all, but it was a prequel to, oh, geez. It filled in the gap. If you guys know Star Wars at all, and I don't want to get into this too much. You know what? Not... Star Wars movies are so confusing because let's say you wanted to go buy new Star Wars movies. Let's say you just... Oh, blame George Lucas for that one. It's confu- You don't know what to buy because it's like, okay, so I've got he's, these he's, episodes. He started, and... with, he started with four, five, and six and then said, oh, yeah, I'll get to one, two, and three. I've totally written it down. BS. He didn't have it written down. He waited years and 20 freaking years before he, he made four. Anyway, the point was is that Everyone wanted to know the question, how in the heck did, did, did the Death Star plans, saw a big flaw in the Death Star, get released to the to the rebels, and how did they exploit it, and all this stuff. That, that's the entire movie was answering this question. And you heard you only heard one line in the original movie, which was, many, many of our brothers and sisters died getting us this information. Mm. And this kind of expands that over to and it is a, it's a good movie and and it's really dark in that sense where if you know the stories at all you're watching the whole thing you're going yeah none of these guys make it but wow. it's a, it's a big sacrifice mission it's a suicide mission to get the plants well there's one thing about life we can all be sure of none of us make it out alive not the truth hey uh real quick because i don't know if it i want to get this message out uh and i sent it through to uh uh, Bob from Globusters and he's Odin. in our chat, by the way. So. Oh, perfect. The Colorado Meetup. Mm. Remember, I've been doing that. They're doing yeah. they're doing it weekly now. In fact, this last one they just did had twenty five people, which is pretty great. Considering that was the first week was twelve, this next one was twenty five, and who knows what's going to happen after that. It's just like the growth of flat Earth. It is. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. But he was looking. He's going. Hey, is there anybody in Colorado that could be a guest speaker? And I go, you know, there's several people in Colorado that might be available maybe and so i sh i forwarded the phone number and the name of the guy that's running it john vanuck i think to bob at globusters and odd you were just waving your hand or was that just a tick oh sorry <laughs> you were just like whoa i'm like what? who are you waving to <laughs> Do you have a cameraman on the other side? Um, no, 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 no. <laughs> Melody just got home. Hang, hang on. I'm going to kill the camera for one sec. Okay. Co cover for me. All right, all right. Oh, he's killed the camera because he's probably kissing her right now. Right now. Maybe, maybe not. I'm going to go into chat and say hello to new people who are here. Uh, RJ. Uh, got no one's flower. Nora here. Carly Sunshine is here. Also, Amir Insanity is Sanity. Effie Heartline Realm is here. That's a good name. Um, Flattery is here as well. And did I say they lie Ohio earlier? I maybe did, maybe did. So now I've done it twice, if so. Plasma John Doe is here uh, as well. And Flat Earth Today, Michael of Wake the Sheeple, who is saying goodbye. Um, Jose Nava is here, and um, let's see, Maximum Infinitum is here. Uh, let's see, Nathan Oakley says, it's a story of intergalactic incest. So I guess that's Star Wars that we're talking about. Mulish is here, Greg Blakesley, Terry Elrod. Uh, let's see. I'm back. You are. Did you kiss yep. her? I was theorizing yeah. that you had a little kiss. Yes. Um, good. That's nice. Uh, John Sizudik. Oh, sorry, I really butchered that. But John says, I told my son I had to imagine Rogue One as a Western to make it realistic. Good movie, though. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, the, the point was, yeah, I've given up a lot of space stuff along those lines. Because and, and new movies that come out that are really blatant. Like if if I wasn't into Flat Earth. I may have gone and seen The Martian in the in the theater mm. with Matt Damon. No. I did see Interstellar just for the the concept of black holes and uh, time compression. I used to just but, love all of those movies. And it really wasn't because I believed in space or that that would be how life would be someday. But it was just those movies have a lot of excitement. And just like what was said about imagining it was a Western, the idea, the adventure regardless of where it is is what made it so exciting right. and the the imminent death and the that that was the exciting part and it's sad giving those things up i guess now all we've got are movies about end of the world plagues and asteroids hitting oh wait the asteroid ones are gone too well yeah. i guess we could still hold on dearly to the movies about plagues 
I don't think that and could happen got, either got, on flat earth. For some reason, I think this place that's been created, I don't think plagues will be yeah. allowed to happen that wipe out every single person. Yeah. Safety measures, I'm pretty sure, are in effect. Because you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you do things. We we would do that. You don't want to let the whole colony get wiped out. It just wouldn't make sense. Why would this be created where we could destroy it? Now we can destroy right. each other. We can destroy places, but right. they always come back, and new people are born, and things are repopulated. It's yeah. uh, show me an a show me an asteroid that's hit a city, even a glancing blow, even a small one. Show me an asteroid that's killed people. And don't give me that Tunguska blast of 1908. Don't even, that, that was a forest in the freaking Soviet Union. Exactly. Was it Soviet Union back then? No, 1908, it would have been in Siberia. Anyway. So I think we're safe. Now, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're not safe from each other because there's an awful lot of people out there tearing at each other's throats, metaphorically yeah. and uh, physically. But yeah. I think we're safe in the larger scheme of things. And that's a great feeling right. that you get when you figure out the earth is flat or isn't a globe. You realize you're not just shooting through space. I used to be, when I was young, kind of a little freaked out and frightened when I thought about it, about earth shooting through space. What if we hit something, you yeah. know? I used to just, you can, when you're young and you're in bed alone at night, you can freak yourself out thinking about things like that. And that's where you can get lots of bad dreams from and just obsessing over that. And why would the people who came up with this idea of a globe want small children to be made to live in fear? Think about it. Hmm. Good point. And they point. evolve to make us live in fear from the moment we come into this place. Well, and, and we go out. And there are different levels of fear. I mean, but it's not it's not like the fear completely paralyzes huge portions of the population. It's again like a roller coaster in that regards. You're anxious. I wouldn't call it fear as much as I would call it a, a being anxious or being tense. You know, you you you've talked to a lot of people. It's, just, it's not like everyone's just terrified of, of everything all the time. Yeah, there are people like that. But most people handle it, I think. Well, what you do is you put it out of your mind when you think yeah. about the fact that Earth is spinning and then shooting through galaxies or shooting through our galaxy and the fact that a, that a, a, a meteor or asteroid or something could hit us at any time and take us out or that there could be aliens who will be here and will blow up the Earth because of all the movies we've seen. Yeah. You, you can really feel powerless powerless about your own destiny and what does it matter if i get a college education or marry the man or woman of my dreams or have children doesn't matter we're going to get wiped out anyway and they have this kind of fear porn inserted into schools where they tell you how long our star the sun will last before it goes supernova sure and you realize when you're taught that well you know i'll be long dead when that happens but then you think about well, your children your children's children your children's children's children Part of you will be here when that happens. And that's just disgusting that they've put that into play for us to, to think about, to worry about, to obsess about. There's enough things to worry about in the natural world. Agreed. And, and you're right. People do have to put it out of their minds and come up with different distractions. And we see this on a, on a microcosm where people, when they feel like they're, they don't have any control, and you know it, you've flown with people first time on plane or sometimes even 20th time on plane. It's that lack of control. I'm not the pilot. Yeah. I, my life is in their hands. I don't like it. Yes. I mean, seriously, the earth is just a much, if you believe mainstream science is just a much bigger version of that. Exactly. It's a much bigger airplane with um much better food, actually. With much <laughs> better food and a better menu. But there's, uh, you know, but there's way too many unknowns and you'd think that people get freaked out by it. You'd think they'd run less space stories, to be honest. Although the 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 doom and gloom space stories, they pepper them in there. You know, this asteroid. In fact, the, the news media loves to do it. It's like big asteroid coming. You know, they don't. 
There's even a clickbait thing that's circulating on Facebook. I've seen it going on for a while. It shows a picture of an asteroid hitting globe Earth, and it says uh, science has found that there's a you know 80% chance of a giant asteroid smashing into Earth. And when I first yeah. saw this, I clicked on it do, to you know open up and read the story because I thought it was ugh, more space program. It turns out it's a kind of joke that when you open it and you read the article, it said that most people don't click on stories and open them. It's but funny. Those right. sorts of things, those sorts of ideas, the asteroids, those sorts of things. It's what got me in many, for a large part, to divorce myself from the media way before Flat Earth, to not watch news because I didn't want to know about the people killing each other. And I've had varying boyfriends in my life who said things like, oh, you just don't want to be informed about what's really going on. And I said, I don't believe what the news is telling me is what's really going on. And of course, I didn't understand anything about what I understand and what we all understand now about how the media is controlled. And a lot of the stories are hoax events, complete and utter lies, false flags, uh, spin doctoring, trying to get a, get a story across for us to all believe and for us to buy into it. They need that. They need us to buy into it. At that time, I just didn't want to be involved with negativity. I saw all right. this as negativity. So that was my natural inclination. Don't want to hear about that. I don't want to think about an, an earthquake potentially coming to California in five years when I lived in California that will ruin the whole city. You know, it, it's just every time you look at the news or turn on the TV, it's death, doom, gloom, and destruction. And yep. it's most of the time fake. And that's yep. a great feeling. <laughs> <laughs> and, and of course, the, the never ending drumbeat of drama. Yes. Insert drama into everything. Uh, you know, the, the, well, you know, the, the media, the, the old saying, which is, if it bleeds, it leads. That has never been more true than, than now. It's, they, they add drama into absolutely everything because they're afraid people will go to some, somewhere else. There's too many choices out there. If it bleeds, it leads. And then if that fails, throw sex into the mix. Ooh. Uh, that's, the case usually when you turn on the TV, it's always about something involving sex, sexuality, and or somebody getting their head chopped off or getting their arm blown off or murders or riots or you know, it's always something like that. Good and point. I know within the world we live, flat or not, lots of those things do happen. Those things are a factor, but they're completely blown out of proportion because you can't just have the newscaster come on and say, it's a beautiful day. Everything's amazing. The world's getting better. People are coming together and there's plenty of food and there's plenty of other resources for us all. Thank you. Good night. I mean, yeah, that, that, that's Canada, <laughs> basically. <laughs> that, that Michael Moore made fun of that in his documentary about 9-11, uh, I think. Or was it Bowling for Columbine? crap long time since i've seen what, one know. of those one of those two but he made fun of it that the canadian news was just so boring oh, wait a minute i didn't see a michael moore 9 11 documentary did i uh, maybe maybe it was bowling for columbine yeah yeah Great. well anyway the point was it's true it's it's true they don't nearly use the american push of drama sex conflict you know it's and and michael moore was and it's true that their, their lead stories americans are just look and go okay so what's with the transgender thing lately now I'm 54. So I've always known there were people who didn't feel that they were born in the right body. That's something I knew was a thing. I always yeah. knew there were gay people. There were, you know, there were, there were men and there were women and there was, the, yeah. As, as, okay, two things. What but do you mean? Why is it, a, why is it a topic? It's, it's become a topic in the past couple of years where the, where, where was where was transgender uh, 10 years ago? I mean, it, I know there were people who felt that they were transgender, but what's what's happening now? These these things take time. I mean, you got to remember that, again, I, I know you're not really 54, you're only 39, <laughs> but you remember that back in the day, I mean, this took time back in the, the late 70s, early 80s. We didn't, most of the people were uh, completely oblivious to gay people in general. Well, in the I mean, 70s, you know, um, it started becoming more apparent, but a lot of singers were still hiding 
uh, their their true oh, truth. Oh, they 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 were. Barry Manilow, for example, just came out and said that he and his uh, husband that he's that he's gay and he didn't want to talk about it. Everybody knew. I mean, um, yeah, we knew about we knew about people like Liberace, of course. The village yeah. people. Um, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but, but even they're but even, gay, but the 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 aspect of gayness that they showed when they did music in the seventies, people were like, yeah, okay. Sure, but like, for example, and not to go off too much on this, but the uh, the band Queen, everybody in the seventies had that album, you know, the, yes. the 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 first album that Queen put out, the big one, and nobody, in fact, who was it? Um, was it Marilyn Manson or uh, Rob Zombie? He he was great. It's like he's like, who would have thought Queen was? <laughs> he, he didn't know. No, we, we it wasn't in it wasn't in our uh, it wasn't in our media. We just didn't think about it as much no. as we do now now but, but as the as the media has has splintered at, to the point where now we we have target demographic shows for literally everything that's out there it so was only is it more media attention and then facebook and twitter and you know youtube and and the fact that we've got phones connected to the palm of our hands all the time is that why we're hearing more about this or well, is there just more of a trend, uh, I almost said transistor, <laughs> a transgender thing. I think there's more happening. Uh, give them, give them an inch. They'll, they'll take a mile. I mean, you know, full well, I mean, in Hollywood, the, 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 the gay influence, gay and homosexual influence is massive. I mean, producers, directors, stars. I mean, it's, it's, it goes along with creativity. Always has, always will. Hudson. I mean, these things have been. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's been around there forever. Yeah. Rock Hudson lived, died, Nobody knew. And right. then only after he died. Oh, yeah, by the way, he died of AIDS. It's like, what's AIDS? Freddie Mercury died of AIDS as well. So that makes you wonder about AIDS, doesn't it? Frank, uh, Frankie goes to Hollywood. Oh, right. What's his name? I don't remember his real his name. name then. Can't think of the name, but yeah. And yet Jay Giles, who just passed, mm -hmm. I don't think died of AIDS. Mm, well, I guess that's good. Yeah, I think he just died last night. Um, there's people who die in a normal way, and then there's deaths that don't seem normal. And we conspiratards, as they call us, look into all of these things and wonder. You know, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm not well, sure I mean, AIDS is even real. Uh, yeah. A lot of people are saying that it's not, and I'm not the first one to. I mean, at the very, at the very least, and I, I, I'm not shy about saying it. At the very least, it's a engineered. At the very least, if it is right. real, it's complete. It was completely engineered, and it sort of backfired because it took out an entire. Depending on if you believe in the stats, and I do believe in some of the stats, it did take out a whole generation of hemo hemophiliacs. Hmm. hmm. You know, hmm. people that, yeah, yeah people whose blood you, blood you cannot caught, clot. Right. Yeah, yeah. Your your blood doesn't clot very well, and the gay population is notorious for doing charity work and donating blood and pff, nobody knew huh interesting very interesting yeah, yeah it, the look look up the movie again and i know people some people don't believe i didn't it know the gay population was w donated blood i mean i didn't know that was a thing i yeah. help out other people who have been diagnosed with aids uh, yeah no. well i mean, remember they're they're very charitable in general you know because really? they're they consider them well, yeah they consider themselves persecuted which they are in, in a lot of cases so they give to, to charities and they also donate blood anyway the point was there's a movie out there it's fairly old um with matthew modine alan alda and a whole bunch of cameos as you can imagine called the band and the band played on oh i remember hearing about this but i can't about remember. how scientists were basically battling to who's going to be the one to release the first test for it and who's going to release the first pharmaceutical hmm Hmm. Anyway. Uh, let's see. ODD is here um, in the chat and he said something really funny. He said, I'm trying to find it. He said something. He said he's pansexual and that means he smashes pans together. <laughs> what? <laughs> Have him check his Skype account because somebody, if he, if he wants, if he wants to, uh, to put in some FaceTime there, that group in Colorado is, is looking for a guest speaker or, you know, some just to show up. All right. At, at the uh, and the ones that I've shown up at, it's not that they turn into like the flat Earth version of of an AA meeting, but that's really what it turns out like. 
And most of the time, because people are just so grateful to be there with other people. You know how it goes. It's like, hey, my name's John. I'm a flat earther. Hey, John. Exactly. <laughs> you know, my, my flat earth journey started on such and such. My family, really, the, the, the parallels. My family doesn't understand me. My wife doesn't talk to me. I'm just so glad to be here in a supportive room of people like you. And everyone claps. It sounds horribly depressing. <laughs> no, no, no. It's no, it's no. I give. I'm just trying to give you that that AA energy. But that's yeah, exactly. You, you know, you've been to you've been to FE things, and no, they're super super great. Right. But the but the story the they verb are like that, though. the not, verbiage the sounds part. like yeah, yeah, not the depressing part. Exactly. No, I'm not saying I'm in flood or I'm so <laughs> sad. No, but it it's uh, it, the it, they use the same lines. Got Flynn the cat over here trying to think he might want to jump up. So if you hear things falling, you'll know who did it. He's giving me that look that cats give you before they jump up. Nice. Um, we have a couple of people talking about what we were just discussing about uh, transgender stuff. Um, Flat Magic says Freddie Mercury was the stuff, though, when you watch his interviews. Yeah, he really. He really oh, he was, he was probably, he, is, he was awesome. adored by other entertainers. Yeah. I mean, if you watch his, there was a live live show that I, they shot it in six, 16 millimeter in um, Toronto, I believe, back in the late seventies, early eighties, and you know the full tour, you know the full the full set, and he was a heck of a performer. Yeah, amazing voice. Oh yeah, plus, and plus he was such a showman on stage. Yeah, exactly. Like, um, we have Flynn. Flynn sighting. He's on my lap now. Hey, Flynn. There he goes. Um. Wouldn't be a show without cats. Nope. I think we've managed to talk about flat earth once so far. So we better. Well, no, I got some flat earth stuff. The because um, I was looking, you know, I'm trying to catch up because I was traveling today. The when I go into flat earth and I I type in this week, there was a guy that I don't remember him going up the first time. You probably saw him though if you were looking today. Channel's called Bright Insight. It's a good name. Yeah, yeah, he's got 24, 25 thousand subscribers. Flat Earth conspiracy theory debunked. Flat Earth proof 2017 flat Earth debate. He, he just kept, you know, to to get. It's already eh, it's got eight thousand, nine thousand hits. And he was saying that that he caught a lot of flack for it the last time he tried to debate. So you know, glutton for punishment. He's mm. back in it. And it's like he, it, he's already it's got hundreds. Irresistible. Of I mean, it's once you once you hear about it, you you can't just walk away. You have to look. You have to. Yeah. Look. You have to look, and he couldn't understand it. In fact, I keep hearing the same thing from debunkers or or people that are not into it, which is, I was called, I told, I you know, because the flat Earth community is so enthusiastic, where they go and they'll say flat Earth sucks, it's a piece of crap, and then the comments just roll in from our side. You know, you should look, you should do, mm -hmm. and, and, look and, into it. Don't be closed minded. Here's a <laughs> link. Look, check out this great video from ODD. <laughs> you know, yeah, well, that's flat Earth in five minutes. <laughs> That's the nice version of what you right. just said. A lot of people just go to town on on whoever it is, and they're relentless. I and just hope flat earthers don't go in and start being angry at people because that makes that person who's kind of pushing against flat earth think that flat earthers are a bunch of jerks. And although some of them are, most of them aren't. They they don't appreciate the commitment level that we have, which is if you're going to go out of your way and make a video production and say all these bad things about flat earth, you better be ready for the backlash. Yeah. And, flat and earth just, backlash. <laughs> yeah. And it gets worse and worse every time a new person comes out. I mean, this guy, I, he's got hundreds of, of thumbs down already and the comments are just filling up. In fact, how many comments does he have already? You can always tell, you know, if it's, if it's a happy video, you won't get that many comments, but if it's, if it's in a negative light, come on. Open up, you piece of crap. <laughs> it is. Wow, that was loud. You didn't hear that, did you? That yes, I did. Did Melody turn on TV, radio, music, something? No, no, that was the video. It must have, oh. been, must have been playing through something. So anyway, slightly. it's already got uh, 868 comments. Wow, that's a lot of comments. I know. And it's pretty 363 up, 259 down. That's not okay. A good sign. So for those of us, not right now, when the show's over, who want to go make a comment, a nice comment, but a very strong comment, pro flat earth, or, or do what you want. Where, it's called what and where? Oh, the it's just called Flat Earth Conspiracy Theory Debunked, Flat Earth Proof 2017 by Bright Insight. All right. And I'm going to be the, the bad cop on this. I say light them up. Go in and make <laughs> them cry. I say be nice, but be, be strong, be truthful, and give them some links of, of videos. Sometimes, though, 
if you put a link, it won't go in. It, it gets put into a spam filter. So make him feel like the unwashed globalist heathen <laughs> that he is. Ah, uh, let's see. All um, shall bow down before the flat Earth. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, oh, there's somebody named Globe Guzzlers who was doing some trolling in chat. Immediately kicked out. Um, oh, this, you know, I've got some really nice moderators, and for the most part, there's really never any trouble unless somebody comes in and starts using profanity. Other than that, people are free, even if they don't believe in flat Earth, to come on in and then speak their mind. Just be pleasant, you know. Just be pleasant. It's not that. It's not that hard, really. It's not that hard. Um, look, Dina Walker says she has friends who've died of AIDS. So, see, that's eh. the I trust Ukdina. I mean, it, it again. I know there's something wrong with the whole AIDS thing. I know there's something that it's been created to kill people, or it's part of it is a lie, part of it's true. There's HIV, then there's AIDS. I think a lot of it has to do with selling people the drugs that they resort to because they're losing their life, even if they're not interested in in being a part of the pharmaceutical sure. industry or the pharmaceutical industrial complex, really. Uh, they'll At the last minute, yeah, they'll go with the drugs. And maybe the drugs are what kill them, and that's the whole plan all along. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. No I mean, knows. the the media attention was a bit sketchy on it you know there was there was some media attention but not enough for something that should have been a pandemic i mean if it was if it was potentially lethal i mean it, and it was sexually transmitted you'd sure. think sure it, i mean and yeah. it did it did get quite a bit of attention you remember the tom hanks movie philadelphia yes exactly with the very early appearance of antonio banderas and a really good song by a person I'm not a fan of, Bruce Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen. It's a Philadelphia song. Yeah, it's a I really good song. That was nominated for best. Well, Philadelphia won best picture, and I think that song won best song as well. So. Um, a couple of people are commenting on the the whole AIDS thing that uh, HIV, uh, the way says, HIV is the most hideous fake job perpetuated. AZT causes AIDS. Rock Hudson died of either his lifestyle or the treatment. Um, let's see. A couple other people are saying things about uh, HIV and AIDS and how the drugs they give you for HIV kill you. So, <sighs> wow. Eh. Good. Anyway. Um, what else? What else is happening? Let's talk about something other than people dying. A lot of people dying. Uh, there has been a huge, I, I kind of talked about, well, okay. One, did we talk about my hundredth show was last night? Yes, I know. And I, I, I listened all the way. And thank you for that. I called and in from my car at the end and I have a Bluetooth that's part of my car system and nobody can ever hear me on that thing. I'm surprised well, no, no, I was no, even I could, able to I be could, heard. I could hear you, but it was... Uh, your your voice wasn't nearly as rich as it is when you're using that microphone. All right. Well, let's take the microphone. Let's do a little test. Here's with my beautiful blue bluebird microphone. Now, wait a minute. Wait for it. I'm going to unplug it. Sure you want to do that? Well, see, now we can't hear her at all. And some people say, well, maybe that's good. No, I can't hear anything. No, you can't just switch to now she's dead. You got to plug it back in. Can't hear you. Nope. 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 <laughs> no. Well, it's the Mark Sargent show, everybody. Really? Make sure you. There you go. Okay, but now I'm using the microphone with the of the system. Can you hear me? I can. Okay, so this is. Do I sound much different? This is not the bluebird. This is just regular old me. If we met on the streets. Yep, it sounds quite a bit different. The reason is, is because it's echoing from your walls, even though. Oh right, right. So now I'm going to put the microphone back in, hopefully. <laughs> how, many, how many? How many seconds is this going to take? I don't know. Let's try it now. Do 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 do. Okay. Okay. Am I? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah now, now you're now better. Do I sound rich and delicious again? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, a microphone helps because if I don't have the microphone on, it's really, really weird and echoey. But yeah. 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 Oh, anyway, the, the, so I did the 100th show and thank you for everybody that called in last night. It was wall to wall calls and lots of uh, positive, supportive, great people. So thank you for all that. That's and, most of the flat earthers. Yay yeah. Us. Yeah. Not, no <laughs> trolls. 
I mean, out oh, of wow. perfect chance for somebody to troll me, which was last night. And trolls try to re remain anonymous, and that's their weakness: is that they don't won't won't go out of their way, with the exception of just a couple. And even those guys are weak sauce. Mm -hmm. oh, wait, but why did I bring that up? The reason I bring it up is is that we now have huge amounts of flat Earth hangouts, basically rolling all the time. Oh yes, there's there are people stepping on each other's toes. It's not like you even have to wait a few hours for a hangout. There's always a hangout going on. In fact, some people will wait for the gaps and, and say, oh, there's no hangout. We've got to start one right now. <laughs> it's hard right. to find the place where uh, you're not going to step on someone's toes. And I definitely never want to step on anyone's toes. So I always try to make sure that I'm not scheduled when someone else is. But it happens and that's life. It's okay. I mean, we, we've got the, the everyone that's doing r regular big podcasts, they, we've got those pretty much spaced out. Mm -hmm. So uh, Bob does Globusters on Yeah, Sunday. we know when Globusters is on. That's the number one one that everybody yeah. knows when it's on. Yeah, Globusters, yeah. Globusters is on Sunday. Jaren's on Monday. I do Strange World on Tuesday. You do Hot Potatoes on Wednesday. And who else does stuff on a regular basis? I don't think, and they, I think that's pretty, and it's open after that. Yes, exactly. A lot of people do videos whenever they feel like it. And yeah. sometimes every single day. So. Yeah, but the hangouts that go six hours, seven hours, still to this day, I, it just floors me. Well, it's, it's good a, because there's always something happening. It's <laughs> not uh, the, speaking of Bruce Springsteen, uh, 57 channels, I think it was called, and Nothing On, that show about how TV is so horrible. I mean, right. excuse me, that song about how TV is so horrible. Right. Um, yeah, there's, YouTube's not like that when it comes to our little flat earth section. There's uh, always something on. It may not be good, but there's always something on. It may be just some random people sleeping, but there's always something on. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. I, I love the the enthusiasm. Just it just keeps growing and growing and growing. And, and in fact, I when I was at the border today, the the guy you know, thought I could get out of there, and he goes, young kid must have been 28, 29. He goes, so what's the deal with the plate? And I go. Well, it's the book. It's my book. He goes, "What book?" And I go, "I go look, Flyer with Clues." And he goes, "What's?" He goes, "All right, give me the give me the crib notes." He's like, "Look, there's a line of cars behind us." He, and I go, "That we're probably living in some sort of planetarium right now." And he goes, "You really believe that?" And I go, "Yeah, man, it's doing really well." He goes, and <laughs> and no, eggs going, holy smokes. He goes, he goes, uh, and, and and so he actually first time ever he actually took one of my cards. What good, I, good. Yeah. And normally they're not even supposed to take those, but he did. I was like, great. I bet you he's going to look at it tonight. And God help me if I go to the border again and I run into him. Let's see what's going on in here. Um, <laughs> oh, tribulation now. Kathy is here and says, uh, hello. Gone Flat is here as well. Um, <laughs> there was something really good. Oh. This is by Thomas Smith, who writes in our chat. My 12-year-old daughter is tasked with writing a persuasive writing assignment, and she wants to do it on the flat earth. The teacher said no, because it's just a theory, and her sources have to be government, EDU, educational. Uh. I mean, you know what's a theory? She, this, is what, this, is what, this is what she can write about. She, she can tell her teacher, well, can I write about gravity? Can I write about evolution? And the sure. teacher will say, oh, sure, sure. And then your daughter can say, well, both of those are a theory too. Checkmate teacher, woo! <laughs> <laughs> and then you're gonna have to homeschool Thomas because she'll be kicked out of school. <laughs> but really it's true. It's ridiculous, ridiculous. Something just came up, uh, in fact, I, I hadn't checked the headlines since I got back here. And something came on the thing two hours ago at Lun at the lunatic outpost, and it was called "Please Undelete My Flatter Thread." <laughs> I don't even know what this is. Lunatic outpost. It's just a it's a giant forum for lots of people with open minds to throw things out there. And he's uh, this guy's going back into it. I just love that it, that's what came up first in news. Please undelete my flatter thread. That's awesome. Here's something that we haven't touched on and the Flat Earth world has talked about this. You mm -hmm. and I actually have a bit to say on the subject more than some people, but others will agree that they've also had encounters with Aaron Dover, who it was reported died in uh, 
March. Oh, yeah. Was that real? Yes, I believe it was a real story in March. And his obituary is floating around. It doesn't have much on it. But yes, uh, he died out of the United States in March, uh, being reported in April. Paul Michael Bales did a video on it. Other people have spoke about it. Lots of comments on his video. So if you don't know who Aaron Dover is, he still has a channel up. Uh, it's on YouTube, of course, and he has some interesting videos. He was uh, a, a pioneer of controversial thoughts. He's also been on Globusters before, and he was always messaging me and always messaging you. And then past six months or so, he was CCing us both and messaging us, right? Yeah. You still have those emails? I yeah. deleted them. I yeah no I I I get so many emails no well you I remember what they were like and I remember so yeah. many responses one of them was Aaron there is such a thing as karma and you keep writing these horribly assaultive things I wouldn't want to be you man something along yeah. those lines yeah. and I'm not saying his death was due to karma I'm not oh, saying I, you know. Why not? I, we don't know what happened. He supposedly fell from a building or was pushed from a building or uh, it's very, very sketchy. By we don't the have hard and fast reasons. By the, the ghost of Lee Bracker, yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I mean, I feel bad for Lee Bracker. I feel bad for Aaron Dover's family. I don't know his family, but you know, if indeed, if indeed Aaron Dover is dead, I'm definitely not making light of his death. He's a, he was a human being just like us and yeah. didn't deserve to go out like that however that happened because he was quite young um mm. in his 40s i believe uh no one whatever happened that's not that's not right it's not right I but agree. he was just horrendously assaultive with the things that he said threats of bodily harm threatened me in writing with burning me and slashing my throat. I think it was slitting my throat. Um, not for anything I'd ever done to him, just because he, um, he had a lot of anger in his heart. His theories were, some of them really brilliant, some of them a little bit on the odd side, but I mean, what's odd? We're flat earthers. I look into everything, you know? I mean, yeah. he said there was no floors in the uh, World Trade Center and has, or the, the towers, excuse me, and has, photos that show sunlight shining through a lot of people find that a theory that's hard to swallow because they've been inside inside the twin towers and they went you know to whatever floor they were supposed to go to and it was fine yeah i think aaron's theory was that some <clears throat> some floors there was nothing there and the elevator wouldn't go there so you would never actually have to go to that floor so possibly true i mean that thing was built in what i'm guessing 73 i think finished and yeah, around then all right. And so maybe it has been said that that thing was built to fall, built to come down, a whole plan involved with this. So um, if indeed that's the case, having there be no floors is a total possibility. How would you know? Would the fire inspectors know? Um, yes, but people can be bought. Cleaning crew? No, you just tell them, don't go to floors. I'm just making it up. Yeah. Or we have, or we have a new, another team going to that floor. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, right. I mean, it, it could be possible. He had a bunch of other theories that were interesting too. He thinks, uh, or he thought that uh, free energy issues were being covered up by a lot of flat earthers simply by doing flat earth shows such as we're doing now. Sure. Um, and his videos are still on YouTube. And if you've never watched any of them, some are really good. Maybe some would say all are really good. It all depends on what your belief system is or what you like, what you're interested in looking at. I say, yeah. look at everything. I don't know if his channel will come down. Maybe he's not really dead and he's punking us all. I mean, I hope so. I hope he's not dead. I hope no one's dead. Generally, those channels don't come down. The uh, As a matter of fact, if I go in right now, I'm pretty sure not to. Well, you'd have to have the password to be able to kill the account. Well, yeah, it's not like the old days where, yeah, Lee, like Lee Bracker's channel, that's still up. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's not making any new videos, obviously. But, and well, well Tiger Dan. We don't know if Tiger Dan's alive. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, and he's getting no he, reports of his death as there have been with Lee Bracker and with Aaron Dover. So, no. I'm well, going to no, go into but, chat but, and see but, if anybody has any. You, you keep talking. See if anybody has anything on the Aaron Dover situation. Sure, sure. But with with Tiger Dan, you don't know because we never we never figured out his real name. It's not Dan. 
Dan was just, um, that's from Daniel from the Bible. Right. So nine, nine, nine two five. So we never actually knew Tiger Dan's name. So anything could have happened to that guy. We don't know. Now somebody's running his channel though, because comments do pop up from time to time. I haven't seen a Tiger Dan comment <clears throat> in quite some time. Um, interesting comment. Nice comment from Plasma John Doe, who says the greatest respect and love we can give to the great creator is to love, live in love and bliss now. Yeah. I'll give you that. This is true. Um, Israel Adams says some of the elevators did not have a button for some floors. So, um, yeah. And it wouldn't surprise me. Remember we take a lot of things for granted. So if you go to work in that building and you're only going to the 32nd floor on a regular basis, that's where you go. That's where you go. You're, and, why would you go anywhere else? And whenever you see a sign that says, <laughs> do not enter, you don't enter. Right. Right. Mm -hmm or elevator not in use, you don't just like start pounding on it. I need an investigation of this elevator. No, oh. you just go on with your life. So um, we have somebody in here saying as well, Google Judy Wood, Daryl Croswell. Yes, Dr. Judy Wood. Uh, where did the towers go? Her book, fascinating. I really like her theory. It's not even really a theory. She actually only talks about things that are factual in the book. She doesn't tell you how 9-11 happened or really even why it happened. She just says what she saw. So you might want to check out Dr. Judy Wood. Some say that she's, you know, she's a liar and a fraud and a charlatan. So, you know, you make up your own mind. I, I will say this. Flat Earth really opened my mind when it came to expanding on existing conspiracies. Sorry, around. cats are trying to know. Uh, so. That's okay. We, <laughs> me too. Me too. I, I, the, in fact, you have to revisit. Once you get into Flat Earth, you have to revisit just about everything you've ever been suspicious of. And 9-11, remember, I, I used to call 9-11 just a piece of crap operation. I thought it was I thought it was clumsily done, bad execution. thought the whole thing was terrible. And then once, I, once my mind was open to Flat Earth, then I started looking into it. I was like, oh, beforehand, if you would have said, oh, yeah, there's no planes, I would again would have laughed you out of the room and then i started reevaluating some of my own extensive knowledge about ballistics and looking at this going wait a minute it, it can't have it can't have gone down the way it did because of because of what i know and yet there's the video evidence right sort of like the earth you know we've seen the pictures of the earth from space therefore it must be a globe yeah, because we saw planes literally go through the Twin Towers. It sounds funny now to say it, doesn't it? Yeah, but they, they couldn't have gone through the Twin Towers. They yeah. should have pancaked on the sides of those things like a bird. Now, you know? that doesn't mean that people didn't see planes flying, because I know DITRH said he saw, I think, the second plane flying. But that doesn't mean it was an actual plane. No, so. or, or at least a commercial jet. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, I think he just saw something they projected up there. Yeah. That's just my theory. You know, get angry if you want. Um, well, no, let, let me let me break down the ballistics for you real quick. And you, you, I don't know if I've done this on your show, mm -mm. which is yeah. won't take long. Which is that if you're a shooter, and I know some of those guys out here they shoot. If you ever shoot at metal targets, you know, you're using lead. That's a dense, dense material. Are Fire, all bullets lead now? All of them still? Yeah, almost. There, there's okay. lead. They use lead and copper. Uh, and and some different alloys, but it's mostly lead because it's heavy. You want a heavy, a, a dense piece of metal. Th that way you don't have to use anything big. And you can shoot a lead bullet at a steel target. And we're talking not that much steel, you know, quarter inch steel target. You could shoot at those things all day long, go through thousand dollars worth of ammunition and you and th those bullets are never going through that steel target. Saying, okay, what's the point? My point is that's a lead bullet. That's actually got some momentum behind it. If you actually use something like an aluminum bullet, which you really can't buy commercially, then the, the, your gun would wear out before that target actually got penetrated. And then I'll take it one step further. If that bullet was hollow, you know, a hollow aluminum bullet, there's no, statist statistically speaking, it's impossible to get that bullet through a, a quarter inch steel target yeah right okay where are you going with this my, my point is is that an airplane is just a slow moving aluminum bullet that's all it is it's way slower than a bullet as a matter of fact and it's big and it's hollow and it's uh, the only thing is plastics and aluminum that's all it really is and they have to use these two things because they have to make it as light as possible 
The sides of the, the World Trade Center were two feet of reinforced steel. I mean, everywhere. It was designed to take a plane crash. And yet those- And it did. It did at some point. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was, well, small, smaller planes. Right. But the point was the smaller plane just pancaked on the side of it. And, you know, part of it got stuck in it and they had to get rid of it. But the plane, you, even if I gave you the benefit of the doubt and I, you told me that the core, you know, the fuselage, buried itself into that thing, you're still never going to be able to convince me of the wings. The wings are just thin, thin yeah, aluminum. They snap and just yeah. fall. Oh, yeah. Thin aluminum filled with gasoline. Those wings are not going in, and yet they went into every structure that that we were, that we were shown. The both buildings, the Pentagon. The Pentagon was concrete. Oh, the Pentagon thing is such a joke. That's just such a joke. <laughs> the Pentagon was horrible, and but when you look at it, you watch the video, and you can't believe. You know, we saw the video many times on on all the major news sta stations, and it was done well enough. Well enough that at first glance you're going, oh, the plane was going so fast, it just went through the building. And it couldn't have, it could not have done it. At the for ballistics alone, even if you believed in that plane, the way it was advertised, the, it, it could not physically have done it. There's there's no way to to get that sort of energy transfer. The, the metal's all wrong. If it was a steel plane, yeah, you have a chance. But not aluminum, not hollow aluminum, plastic. We have happen. people saying dustified, and <laughs> fake, and uh, all sorts of uh, all sorts of comments about everything about the passports oh, what, being amazingly oh, yeah. strong, Un, untouched. <laughs> oh, or and Judy Wood's arguments were pretty compelling. Yeah, where it it looked like they looked. Well, the more you look at the World Trade Center, the the more complex it gets. To when she starts delving into the energy weapons and how parts of the columns were being vaporized. And then you realize that the, the entire building was reduced to dust. Yeah, and here's another thing. For a while, this is before I was a flat earther, she was being criticized for talking about quote unquote space weapons, space, right? To yeah. negate what she was saying. Um, uh. She never talked about space weapons. She never talked about what it was really. She just talked about what was observable which is right. really all you can do. Yeah, and it was interesting. So by the time I got through with revisiting the whole 9-11 thing, uh, I was like, Ooh, this thing was complex. At the at the very least, it was, it was multi-tiered. And then when you got into the um, part about how the building could have been, there could have been huge chunks of it that didn't even have people on it. Right, and a lot of people are saying that in our in our comments. Um, uh, Michael Wake the Sheeple says, "Hallow buildings," and that's <clears throat> why there wasn't much debris because there wasn't much in some of those floors. If indeed, yep. uh, Air and Dover was right. Yep. Um, uh, Bob from Globuster says, "Steel piercing aluminum projectiles." LOL. <laughs> yeah. So maybe I'm wrong about DITRH. Uh, what he's straight. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I had to. It was rim shot. Rim shot. Um, I know Carly Sunshine is saying something like, oh, no, no, no. Nora Nolan's flower is asking DITRH, DITRH, so you saw nothing that looked like a plane? I always thought he saw something. So maybe maybe I'm speaking wrong about that. Yeah. Uh, let me know. Let me know. In there. Either either way, I mean, if it was, uh, it was a cruise missile, you know, the same sort of thing that hit the Pentagon. They had to have, and they actually have footage. I saw a video just the other day of somebody showing slowed down footage of a cruise missile. Wish I could remember and, the and YouTuber. And the, the, the fake witnesses that were giving the the blow by blow details on the ground that mainstream media was directed to talk to, you know, that they were perfectly no shock syndrome at all. They were you know completely coherent. Oh yeah, it was a plane, blah blah blah, coming from this side and hit this. It's like. Dude, how many nights did it take you to memorize those that, that paragraph? Exactly, the uh, Harley shirt guy. I Okay, I did make a mistake, and I want to clear it up. DITRH says he was watching TV when the second fake plane hit. He went to the beach right after, and he saw the first building literally go poof into dust in seconds. The correction is, I believe it was D. Murphy 25 who said he saw. No, he couldn't have. Oh, somebody said they saw the plane. If a we have a or something again, I don't. But it wasn't DITRH. He saw it on TV, like the rest of us. Got it. No. Somebody says Brookhaven is the smoking gun. Search it. I have no idea what that is. Brookhaven. Hmm. 
Well, no, the smoking gun is still going to be, because it's so obvious, is Building 7. Yeah, but people say Building 7 is a distraction. <laughs> For a distraction from what? I mean, you, you can use it. It's the linchpin, in my opinion, because once you go to Building 7 and realize that if that was staged, then you can't trust anything else. If, Some people if, are saying it was a drone plane. That's where I went first in my whole adventure into 9-11. Sure. Drone is where I went first. And then later I'm thinking when I was watching videos, why would we even need planes for this? So, No, you wouldn't. As long as you get the video footage corrected, you can use anything you want. Ah, the wonderful Sharon Baron, Barone, Baron, uh, by the way, you're really pretty by the way, I want to say, says it was, it was indeed D. Murphy 25 that said he saw the second plane that he was working in Hoboken at the time. Yes, I remembered it was somebody I spoke with that I really like. So He was in New York at the time. He was working in Hoboken. That's right, because he used to have a career as a sort of high-level guy working in finance before he became who he is that we know today. Interesting. So, yeah, weird how, yeah. That, how that is with life. <sighs> this whole thing, this whole journey into Flat Earth, part of it for me came from looking at 9-11 first because I was looking at videos on YouTube. And then boom, leads to another, leads to another, leads to another. And then before you know it, I personally was looking at um, astronauts gone wild and uh, whatever happened on the way to the moon. And then I saw this guy named Mark Sargent's video, Flat Earth Clues. And then yeah, my life changed. And here we are today. <laughs> I think a lot of us have a similar journey. But there's many people who I know I spoke with who have said that the minute they saw 9-11, they were awake enough to realize it was fake. Now I look at it and I say, oh, where, where was my mind? But I was still part of mainstream at that point, even though I was a little bit out of mainstream. I was still part of mainstream enough to believe that what I saw on TV when it came to that was, was true. Hmm. It's embarrassing, but it's the truth. What can I do? And I know a lot, there's many other people too. In fact, there's some people that found out about Flat Earth before they found out about 9-11. So. <laughs> and I think D-I-T-R-H, I keep throwing D-I-T-R-H's name in here. I think he's one of them, actually. So maybe I'm, no way. Maybe it's the moon. Maybe he, well, I, I, you know what, David's going to kill me because I keep getting what he said wrong. <sighs> yeah, it totally was the moon landing. He believed we went to the moon or something. Whatever. Well, lots of people believe we went to the it moon. It doesn't even matter what you believed in first and what the order it was. You figured it all out. But uh, it it's a wild ride, and we're all on it together. Yeah. And every single day, there's new things that are presented to us, and you really have to make the choice. It's like this hand or this hand. Is it real or is it fake? Is it real or is it fake? And, you know, we all make different decisions about certain things. Right. And you can't be angry at other people for coming up with a decision that's different than yours. It's true. Because it's not going to help them look at it any, anymore. Uh, you can't convert someone, I don't think, through anger. They'll just shut down. You can give them information, walk away, and hope that information goes into their head. And then someday, a lot of other information went into their head from other sources. And then it gels into something where they say, yeah, I really ought to look into that. They'll forget what you said. They'll forget what all the other people said. They'll just remember that one video they saw and how their life changed. Yeah. And you doing your part to put a little bit of info their way will kind of like the domino effect, you know, we'll end them up here with us on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Put it, planting the seed. That's still the most important part is just getting people to look at it. Did you see the article that was out there that came out uh, two days ago on the PhD thesis? No, the, uh, did I? No. Th it's, it's interesting. The, the earth is flat. Last week, a huge... Oh, let me read you part of this, if you don't mind. Yes, please. Last, last week, a huge scandal rocked the Tunisian and Arab scientific and educational world. A PhD student submitted a thesis declaring earth to be flat, unmoving, and young, only 13,500 years of age, and the center of the universe. Going even bolder and further, the student explicitly rejected the physics of Newton and Einstein, the astronomy of Copernicus and Kepler, the cosmology of the Big Bang, the main models of atmospheric and geological activity, and most of modern climatology. The student submitted her thesis after, this woman, after five years of work, which is interesting, 
It was then sent to two assessors, thus passing the first stage of approvals. The reports were expected soon for the thesis defense to be scheduled. And it was this, this stage that fate luckily intervened. A copy of the thesis was leaked to the former president of the Tunisian Astro Astronomical Association, who checked that it was not a hoax, then quickly rang the alarm by posting the Facebook, the, the general conclusions of the thesis verbatim. And I don't want to get into too much here, but you guys should check out the article if you get a chance. The uh, It was written by, and you guys feel, you know what, let's do an all call here real quick. It was This, this article was written by a guy who starts going into here, let me read this real quick. He was talking, the, the second part of this thing was called comeback. Flat earthism has lately been making a comeback and spreading. Earthism. Flat earthism. That's flat, weird. flat earthism. <laughs> okay. He's not from here. No. Has late, lately been making a comeback and spreading like bushfire through social Wait media. Wait a minute. Bushfire? People usually say spreading like wildfire. Or Does brush fire. Help with his writing. <laughs> well, no, again, he's not from here. But I'll give you guys his email address at the end so you can torture him. Uh, search for Flat Earth on YouTube. You'll find almost a million videos. More than that. Flat Earth Society gets 400,000 pages on the web. Flat Earth Proof gets you 200,000 pages, etc. But this social media trend I attribute to people's inclination towards conspiracy theories. NASA has faked the moon landing. NASA Photoshop, space images give us real proofs that these interplanetary spacecraft are factual. In 2001, when the internet was still young and the moon landing hoax was just emerging as a trending meme, I gave several talks titled, Did NASA Fake the Moon Landing or Are We Miserably Failing to Educate the Public? Which side is he on himself? Oh, no, no, no. He's, he's, you'll, you'll get this in the end. All right, all right. I'm, I'm two paragraphs away. But the latest shocking event, the PhD thesis, implies that we are not only failing to educate the public, that is manifest in the trendy flat earth and NASA lies memes on social media, but also our brightest students. It has been reported that the PH student has previously graduated at the top of her class. What we are failing to clarify and communicate is how to distinguish between scientific knowledge, facts, models, theories, etc., and religious knowledge, what verses mean and what they intend to teach us, I believe the Arab Muslim world will continue to suffer educational and cultural crises, not to mention a total lack of understanding of science until it properly digests the different methodologies of science and religion without diminishing the value of each. So what? if you got if you guys want to email him, oh my gosh. Give him give him a piece of your mind. And I'll throw him at you. His name is Nidal N I D H A L Gesum. G U E S S, <clears throat> excuse me, O U M, is a professor of physics and astronomy at the American University oh, of see. Sharjah. So he's Sharjah. just even into that thing of slamming uh, people, uh, Arabic people, too. He's throwing that in the mix, uh, pretty much yeah. calling them science deniers. Yeah, Arab, Arab people are idiots because they believe in flat earth. Well, I mean, PH student, she put herself out there. I still don't know who this is yet. You can follow him on Twitter at uh, twitter.com slash Nidal Gessum, all one word, N-I-D-H-A-L-G-U-E-S-S-O-U-M. He needs some flat earth tweets sent his way. Yes, he, he does. <laughs> flat earth tweet this man. Yes, exactly. And that's a shame too, because there's many people, uh, in, 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 in those countries who are flat earthers. It's a fact. So, I mean, the educational system has nothing to do with why we got here today. We went through the educational system, be it a private school or a public school, yeah, and we is, most yeah, of us passed and we did well and we some went to college or whatever. Educational system has nothing to do with this. We just broke out of indoctrination. There's a exactly. difference between education and indoctrination. This guy needs some talking to. He, he needs some learning. He, <laughs> he does. <laughs> He does. Oh, oh, look at me. I got thrown out for making explosives on campus. Exactly. I turned out fine. Yeah. Some say. <laughs> I reckon. The, um, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Tweet this guy and give him give him what for because he, he like, you know, again, yeah. It, it, well, look at when the basketball players started coming up. What's the first thing they start blaming? It's like, what college did he go to? Yeah. He only went to Baylor for a short time, so he's dumb. He went He went. graduated from Duke. Duke must be idiots. 
you know, this guy, whatever. I mean, that's, but again, that's the knee jerk reaction. Right. You're going, you're going to question the education. So it has nothing to do with your education. No. system. Mm -mm. Like what's the Einstein quote? Education is what's left over once you forget everything you learned in school. Most of the things people learn at school are things that they've memorized so they can pass the test, so they can go and get a job that won't really have anything to do with the things that they had to learn at school. No. So we all know that. Yeah. We all know and, that. And conspiracy people, again, they they learn all their stuff outside of school because schools do not teach conspiracies. Right. In fact, they, they don't even, there's only a few that they even broach. One is JFK, where they that's say, oh, he, that that spoke of because not when I was going to school, but that was a long time ago. No, it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> the, uh, but, but yeah, yeah, they'll say, well, it was a lone gunman. It'll say, leave Harvey Oswald, shot him from the, the book depository, and, and that was it. You know, that's, that's how it goes. And the moon, they'll say, oh, yeah, I went to the moon. Let us not, uh, let us not do blah, blah, blah conspiracy theories, what Bush said. Well, I can't remember the quote. Oh, we all remember it generally. We don't need me to get it right here. Yeah, entertain, yeah. entertain, or, something yeah. like that. Basically, don't look at any conspiracy theories that come your way because they'll undo all the lies that we're telling here. <laughs> right. Um, right. I have an email but, I want to read here too uh, sure. from Tom from West Boulder. Excuse me, Tom West from Boulder. <laughs> Tom West from Boulder says. I am endlessly amazed at how many people who embrace every possible conspiracy theory shut down when the flat earth is brought up. Just yesterday, I let this guy I just met ramble on about 9-11 and Sandy Hook, the tomahawk bombing fake a few days ago and the moon landing. On and on he went. Finally, after he took a breath, I asked him about flat earth. He said, it's a con perpetuated by the Jesuits. Of course the world is not flat. Are you nuts? <laughs> Uh, exactly what we're talking about. Oh, his answer is a little different than what I was expecting, though. I thought again, some people well, say, well, fill in Jesuits, fill in Jews, fill in Masons, fill in whatever. Well, or or the the more common one that I see or hear is that it's a distraction from the real quote unquote real conspiracies that are out there. Yes, yeah, so that's the number one thing people say. A challenge. It's like, okay, what conspiracy do you hold most dear to your heart? And do try to convince me why it's bigger than flat earth. And people will say things like, well, what about the, uh, the, the fact that let's talk about cancer, the true causes of cancer, the real ways that you can heal yourself and the pharmaceutical industry. That's a bigger conspiracy than flat earth. And I, if, if I were speaking to somebody who just lost a family member to cancer, I understand how they felt because they were using their emotions, which aren't always the wisest things to use. Sure. But if you look at flat earth, it encompasses the medical industrial complex and the cancer industry. It basically is an industry. It, it covers, it encompasses all of these things. We've been lied to about everything. And when you pull back the lid and look into flat earth, you see all the little lies like roaches scurrying around. And you're like, two choices, open the lid, go in and start killing the roaches or shut the lid and run away and pretend, ah, I didn't see anything. And all of us have decided to go in with the roaches. Ooh, what a weird analogy. You know, the, the line from Fight Club, and if you guys have not seen it, the from the best year in movies, 1999, if you have not seen it, really go back and revisit it because whoever wrote it, had some brilliant lines in it and one of my the most the one that people miss most often because it's tough to remember is when edward norton was talking remember because he was an insurance adjuster for the uh for the auto automotive industry and he would go out and look at accidents and decide after you know, after you look at enough accidents you start realizing if there's something wrong with the car you know if there's a brake problem and then you, then he did the simple math calculation, which he said, uh, I'll give you the, the layman's version, which is we look at the problem with the automobile. If the cost of the lawsuits, the, the, the settlements that we have to pay out for people not to talk about the problem, let's say it was with the brakes, if the cost of those settlements is less than the cost of recalling the cars to swap them out for parts, we don't do a recall. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking, what are, you, what, are you, what are you talking about? I'm saying it still boils down to the least amount of money. 
And that is, is like, look, if we can pay off people not to tell them that our cars explode when you do a certain thing, like three different things simultaneously and the car bursts into flames for no reason, then that's, that's what we're going to do. We're going to, and this applies to everything, everything that we do, especially in the United States, the, the tobacco industry was notorious not to go off on, on several tangents, but don't discount what happened with the tobacco industry for years and years and years, which was they had a massive lobbying campaign. And if the people they couldn't buy off died of natural causes, well, died of cancer related deaths anyway, and they buried it under legal legal precedents for decades until finally a bigger uh, Goliath than them, the healthcare industry, fought went up against them. If it wasn't for the healthcare industry, you know, we, it's still we'd still be marketing cigarettes to children. It'd still be on the Flintstones. The guy who wrote Fight Club, I have a heck of a time pronouncing his last name. It's Chuck Palahaniuk, and I know I've ruined that, but. He had a really good quote that really applies to us within Flat Earth, that <laughs> it, it's only after we lost everything that we're free to do anything. And <laughs> we are free to do anything now because we've lost all of that global programming. And that involves things like AIDS and HIV and 9-11 and Sandy Hook and Boston bombing and all the new ones that have come out in the past almost days. X. Excellent point. The more you have to lose, the more leverage they have on you. I'll give you a couple different examples here. And I, I know we, we're, we, we still got a little time left, mm -hmm. which is um, Joe Rogan. Perfect example. Outspoken conspiracy guy. Went against the Apollo moon program and was doing really, really well. But they figured out his pressure point. They figured out, okay, we can use things. He had things to lose. If it was his family, if it, it wasn't his career necessarily. His career was, was never going to be stellar. But he was always finding work either as a comedian or an actor or a podcast or whatever. But they they got to him, and once they figured out that he had something to lose and they pointed that out to him, he stopped being a conspiracy guy, plain and simple. Kyrie Irving, different because he was young, what well, still is young. He's only been in the NBA six seasons, but he's already won a title. He's already achieved what most people wanted. You know, So, so it wasn't like when you threaten an Academy Award or somebody that's that's going for an Academy Award and saying, you're never going to win an Oscar if you don't stop talking about this. You know, that person will shut up. Uh, so with Kyrie Irving, he already won his title. He's like, what do I have to lose? Seriously, I'm an athlete. What are you going to do to me? Break my legs? I'm insured. You know, I've already I've already made millions of dollars. My best friend is, is uh, LeBron James. What are you going to do to me? So then you see some, but then you see somebody like Shaq who's so media endorsed, you know, it makes so much money, it makes way more money now than I think he's ever has, you know, 20 million a year for doing what? Yeah, for doing, not playing the sport. He makes not money. playing the sport. He's, right. you know, hold up a can of soda. Well, <laughs> that's what he's playing. He's playing the uh, endorsement game. And that's the bigger game when yeah. you play a sport. So he has a lot more to lose because it's not about the titles anymore. It's about his, not even his legacy. It's just about his, you know, his, his style, you know, he doesn't want to be, let's put it this way. He wouldn't, it wouldn't take much for an agent to go to him and say, dude, people are going to laugh at you in the street. If yeah. You keep, and if yeah. You what keep about your going. daughter? Uh, don't you want her to have a good life? Do you, or do you want her to be the yeah. butt of jokes? Do you want all you've ever earned to be stripped yeah. from you? Now it did take him five days before they could finally schedule him on Jimmy Kimmel and get him to formally retract the question is who called who did jimmy call his agent or did his agent call jimmy you know it, who where were the meetings that's those are the little things behind the scenes that i love well, the point was to to your statement and that is yes the more you have to lose the tougher it is because we hold on to it we we don't want to lose that whatever it is that we worked so hard to get the same reason why the PhDs in whatever the physical science is, they won't come out against us because if you even address it, you're going to be you're going to be ridiculed by your peers and you're going to be ostracized in the academic community. The thing is, is that it's going to take some really, really bold and brave people. We are those bold and brave people, we have to, I would say, build our numbers up. We can't really rely upon celebrities because they have too much to lose. Now I know all of us have businesses, careers, families, 
but not to the level that Shaq has, let's just say, when it comes to yeah. the income coming in. So we're not really poisoned and ruled by money. That's why we're able to come on here and do this. It's going to take more of us, more of us, the little guy. I hate saying that, but you know, the real sure. people to band together and talk about the things that are factual, that water doesn't stick to an object. It just doesn't, that there's no measurable curvature. And then they cannot measure that we're moving. Those things, those things are just, bam, case closed. Yeah. And pushing that, talking about that is the way forward. Putting out those seeds and not letting people who are trolling you get you down people who are trying to dissuade you people who are trying to put you down and make you feel dumb people who are trying to make you feel that you are an idiot or that you're responsible for the dumbing down of society we are the ones responsible for people waking up it's something to be proud of agreed absolutely agree and for me if again i i like to think of best case scenarios which is it's only going to somebody all it's going to take really is one producer to come at this sideways you do a show or documentary and you come at it from a, a novelty sort of a okay isn't this an interesting topic but you don't take a side you put it forward and you say these are the you know these are flat earthers and they actually believe the earth is flat you know decide for yourself are they crazy and let it play its let it play itself out naturally because it will and it'll be polarizing from the get go it might happen a show and it might not happen i mean there's definitely people have said oh there's a flat earth reality show in the works no, there is not, or maybe there is, but I don't know about it. No. There's none involved that I know about. There is a recent little um, bit of There's, interest that happens yeah. involving you being talked to, me being talked to, and Math Powerland, but nobody else included in it at that point. That doesn't mean they wouldn't have included other people, but uh, it turned out that 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 wasn't it didn't happen because it's really hard to get uh, a company to agree to have people on a satellite TV station who say there's no such thing as satellites. Hmm. That's not bad. That's not, that's an interesting take. It's going it. to take somebody I, who's like you said, coming at it sideways, but is doing a flat earth show, a documentary or a reality show. Is that really the best way forward? Maybe, maybe it'll expose it to more people. I don't, I don't, I don't know. know if it's the best way, but I still think it's a great Avenue because it will allow, it'll, place a big target on the wall for mainstream media. It gives mainstream media license to go after it. Mm. Meaning, meaning they can all of a sudden it's like, you, you've heard, you, you and I have talked about this somewhat where, you know, we'll, we'll call it flat earthers. We'll, we'll call the show flat earthers is flat earthers. The end of television as we know it, you know, <laughs> is it genius or is it the worst idea ever? You know, is it, there's so many people that would, again, cause you can't stay on the fence about it. People would, be, it, it, people would go to work. I, you know this. People would go to work and say, dude, I watched the most screwed up show you've ever heard in your life. Right. Those people are total morons, total idiots. Did you see oh. that guy with the round microphone? <laughs> <laughs> this guy was waving his hands and had crazy eyes. And it, he, uh, all the things they would, they would go after. But again, for every, however many people will watch it, then you get a couple people. Let's say there's eight people in the room or 10 people in the room. Eight of them would be like, this is the most whacked out thing. And two people would be like, you know what? This is, I hate to say it, this is starting to make sense. Yeah, exactly. And then, and then those eight come down yes. on those. What is, what, how many have you had? You know, and they, then they start going back and this forth. Is, it would be a televised <laughs> version of what's happened in our own lives. When yeah. we came into flat earth ourselves yeah and that's what makes it great any producer that has that's worth their weight they know this they know that's the energy you want you don't care if people love it or hate it as long as they love it or hate it you don't ever want people who are like eh, eh, it's okay yeah, yeah, flat, what's it's for okay. dinner <laughs> that, that yeah that is not <laughs> let's go watch the bachelorette you know the uh it's always that way with flat earth. You you could see this in the comments every single time. It's like people just get enraged. That's, and that's this untapped energy that the producers are missing out on. I mean, for God's sakes, 
It's got it. You want instant drama? Who would want to watch Flat Earthers, you know, the Flat Earth debacle, rather than three or four shows on beards? Right. Seriously. Right. And beards. you know what? Yeah. There's only so much you can do with a beard. Or Swamp Hunters. Yes, exactly. Part part five, you know. Look, Dina Walker is talking about television and how it's the most powerful mind control in, in our live chat that there ever has been. And she got rid of hers years ago. It's true. But doesn't mean we have to have televisions. This is for the people who still watch the television and who aren't aware of any of this. They don't go on YouTube. So uh, maybe it would be cool if it happens. If it doesn't happen, we're still going to continue doing our thing. And all the different people within Flat Earth are going to do their thing. The people who are writing books, the people who are putting together documentaries and, you know, still going to do our thing for a lot of people that say the television has been so diminished because media has fragmented in so many different ways now and youtube's big and netflix is big and everybody just binge binge watches stuff think of this when the shack story came out there was one group that was noticeably absent in reporting that and that was mainstream television none of those networks i mentioned before abc nbc cbs cnn mm -hmm. and fox none of them guess who they're owned by they're owned by the same people yeah they're so all told what? like uh eh, ixnay on the at flirth a or however you say it in pig latin don't talk about flat earth at earth flat earth at yeah earth i'm not flat? i'm not gonna try it but, <laughs> but the point was is that you can talk about it all you want on the internet but when it comes to because because mainstream television those networks are still considered the lowest common denominator they always they always have been yes and so if they're going out of their way not to cover it, that means that in their mind, they're not ready yet. They're not ready to, to deal with whatever backlash because they've probably seen for the heck, they've probably done computer models. What I'm talking about right now, about as far as being the most polarizing show ever, that's what would happen. People, it would be such a massive, it'd be so new. No one's ever done anything like this. So it's- Yes, it's, but it does. It seems like doing a show like that would make people want to sue people for saying these sorts of things, that NASA is lying, that, um, for example, oh, just because we live where Boeing is. Boeing is right kind of in your backyard yeah. being in, near the Seattle area. And it seems like Boeing would be angry and pull all their advertisements for anything involving airplanes. It depends. I mean, we're not, on. we're not hairspray saying spray makers would be like, wait a minute, you're saying those women's hair is being held up by hairspray on the ISS. We're pulling all of our ads for our hair care products. They might, I mean, they're, I, and I have talked Everything's about related. To it is, up. it is. It still comes down to, if you give it too much attention, then all of a sudden <clears throat> you have congressmen who didn't really give a crap before now, before then all of a sudden looking, it's like, Hey, wait a minute. How about you know? How much money have we been appropriating to NASA every year? And because remember, you don't want that class action lawsuit to even start rumbling, because it would it would it's too big. It's this it's too big to fail. There's too many industries tied to it. Hmm, maybe you're right. That's the thing. That's why I think that there's been hesitation. That's why we've, you and I have done like a couple of screen tests. It's basically, here's the glamorous screen test. They call you on Skype, and then you talk about flat earth and they listen to you and then they say, okay, thank you. And then that's it. <laughs> yeah. You try that's not it. to be, you try not to look, you try to look interesting, but not eccentric to the point where you and, scare people. And also they don't really tell you what they're going to do or who's going to do it exactly. It's all very vague. So I think I've done three. You've done more. So yeah, I'm still waiting on one for the, um, and people uh, will say, oh, it's cause you guys want to be famous. Uh, no, it wouldn't have anything to do with specifically us. It would just be like a foot in the door to mainstream and a bunch of other people would be doing it too. Again, um, what, which is, which is why when it's good I, and bad, I don't know, it's, when, it's not happening as easy for us to talk about what if it happens, but it might happen. When we mentioned was a couple of weeks ago when, uh, FEA was, was rumored to have maybe an inroad to the, um, Howard Stern, Howard Stern show. Howard yeah. Stern show. Happy for him if he could pull that off. It would be As, great. Why not? I mean, the, the the mainstream media exposure that gives us way more leverage than than we ever would have had. Same thing with um, uh, Eric and potentially getting on the Alex Jones show. Yeah, and Eric already was on Eddie Bravo. I mean, you can say that's not mainstream, but come on, Alex Jones is mainstream. It's the dark side of mainstream. So. Yeah, he's got he's got a lot of followers.
a yeah, lot. Exactly. Exactly. I want to go into chat and say hello to Jason, Synthetic Dread, and Plain Truth, and the Fairs person as well. Um, MV is here, and Billy Sunday is here, Skyfly Bry, and uh, Gone Flat, Maximus Infinitum. I think I've already said hi to that person. Fred Caldwell. Uh, and um, let's see. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, Globe Busters is saying that there's some person named Mark Wilson. Oh my gosh, the biggest troll ever on Flat Earth who continually posts blocks of information over and over again. This is funny. This guy, Mark Wilson, posts that you and I have a secret daughter in... Uh, oh, yes. And he in, keeps um, posting that. Uh, that so In Croatia. Yes. Croatian girl, an interview I did a long time ago. It's somewhere in the 40s range, 40-something range. Um she doesn't have her channel up anymore. It's not because she's not a flat earther. She just doesn't want the drama. And this guy, Mark Wilson, is part of that drama, just continually plaguing her and others by posting that she's our daughter. And that all stems from something crazy. During the interview, it was a bad connection where she was in, in, in her home. And she was talking about how her father was interested in conspiracies. And her father started listening to Mark Sargent. And then it kind of broke up a little. And then I said, okay, so where were we? You? you were your father, a Mark Sargent. Oh, and I didn't somebody know Somebody grabbed that and put it up and said, Patricia slipped and admitted that Croatian girl's father is Mark Sargent. And it's like, no, you idiot. That's not what happened. So the conspiracy of you and I having a Croat daughter. Now, so what if we even did? <laughs> Not, <laughs> really that's your response but, so what if we did it if, if i had if she was my daughter i'd be proud um we, we don't and we, and we are proud of our, <laughs> our anyway this guy mark wilson he's been posting this on all sorts of videos and he was here in the chat i don't know what he was posting. he was actually in there oh. he was in there and bob from globusters I, he, bye -bye. I i don't generally read his posts but good lord he spends a lot of time just he spends a lot of time it can be i can be away from my computer for like three hours and i come back and he's put like 20 different spam messages of the same thing yeah on and basically anybody that responds to anybody that posts a comment he will respond to that comment with some sort of spam yeah. And I read one that he's actually blocked on Eric's channel. Well, he's promotes Eric Dubay. But he but he says that he's actually blocked on Eric's channel. It's like why? Well, maybe because he spams good stuff. <laughs> I don't know. No, he's he it says the only way you can get info is to go to Ifers. These people are shells. Oh, they he's one of Eric's daughter. Bam, whatever. bam, 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 bam. So, you know, whatever. We're giving him way too much airtime. <sighs> It's like, dude. Well, you know, you know what? I'll give him, give him, I'll give him fifteen more karma, seconds every time. Karma, dude, don't do it. <laughs> Even if you don't yeah. want to call it karma and you find that to be too new agey, the do unto others aspect will yeah, come into play. Yeah. Lee Bracker was no joke. Okay, I mean. telling you, don't um, do it. Flattery is asking, do you guys have any kids? I do not have any children. I have three cats, and I know you don't have any children. How would you deny what we had in Croatia? <laughs> You're right. Side At wrong. the agency. Um, oh. No, I don't have any children. The reason I don't have any children is I can't have any children. How about that for an answer? So she will be the oh, world. Well, well, no, that's going to be spun into she can't because she's a tranny. No, <laughs> <laughs> anything you say will be just like blown. No, up. no, 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 no. I don't. No, I cannot get pregnant as a born female. Just can't. So. No, and uh, for me, I was. I just never. It was something I didn't want to get involved with i didn't right. there's uh, a lot of people like that um my life is just fine i love children but i don't have children and i've been in relationships with people who've had children and it was lovely so i'm not against children i don't have a it's not like i don't have a motherly instinct i just do you yeah, want, I'll, I'll give you life two gives you different paths and you go with it i'll give you two quick uh, movie references because you know i love movies to why I didn't. One was uh, the movie, which most people probably didn't see, with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito called Twins. They oh, I know that movie. And they where, were, they were where, so physically uh, where, dissimilar, it was ex crazy. Exactly, where Arnold was literally raised on an island, homeschooled on an island with, a, with you know, with unlimited resources, like perfect nature versus nurture type thing, where he was raised to be this perfect person and then finally introduced into the world and he was so naive about everything, right? 
And it's like, that's the only way you could ever raise kids now because you don't have, if you're a parent, I'm sorry, you don't have a chance, uh, you know, unless you're severely limiting what media input they have because it, there's just too much coming at them. I mean, and this was, this has been around, this idea has been around for decades. But the other thing was, and I, I don't want to sound bad like I'm for eugenics or anything like that, was the movie Gattaca with- I Ethan, love that movie. Ethan Hawke, Ethan Uma Hawk. Thurman. Mm -hmm. uh, Very good movie. Jude Law. A great cast, actually. Yes, great cast. And the the concept there was that parent once we got to I mean, it's a slippery slope. Once we got into a pattern of eugenics, any parent that that once they found out about their birth defects of of their child didn't do anything about it, they were considered irresponsible. They were they were looked down upon uh, like second class citizens, like you were natural born. And for me, it's like, look, we can't do anything about it now. And I'm sorry, I'm just not going to roll those dice. I'm not. Yeah, and for me, abortion was would would have been always out of the question. So that's just mm. me, though. Yeah, it's uh one of those things. Um, my mm. mom was given a drug in case anybody wants to know why I can't have kids. Well, right now I'm too old to. But uh, anyway, uh, my mom was given a drug to prevent. This was in the '60s. Morning sickness. She lost the baby before me. I'm the firstborn. Um, she lost the baby before me. Uh, because of this drug, it was given to women back then for morning sickness. But okay. what it ended up doing is making boys have a low sperm count, the children of the mothers who took this, and the girls have an inability to, uh, to get pregnant, to carry a child to term. It's nothing physically on the outside. It's just something that, anyway, my sister had various surgeries and did all sorts of I don't, is it called artificial insemination? I, there's another word yes, for it. She it. paid lots of money for that and stopped doing it, gave up, she and her husband, and they actually got pregnant naturally right after they gave up. Wow. And I have one niece. My brother has no children. I have no children. So, um, hmm. yeah, it's a drug that was, you know, a, a common a common drug that doctors gave, you know, speaking of the uh, – pharmaceutical industrial complex. I know it's the military industrial complex, but it's really the same thing. It's, yeah. you know, they, 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 they don't care about life. They don't care about us. They just want to give us medicine. And that's, well, there's yeah. no money. There's no money in the cure. Yeah, it's exactly. only money in the treatment. And yeah, we, and we think we're so advanced and, and we've come a long way. It's like, look, it was not that long ago that you know, every year there's still medical things we're, we're dealing with the rush to market. You know this the the vaccination thing not to end on a bad note because i don't want to but the vaccination thing is a perfect example like rush to market before adequate testing is done and you have a lot of uh uh vaccine information at your disposal you've really you're really well schooled we you have a lot of knowledge you're knowledged up on, well it, on, on it just made sense to me and i i totally got the i understood by the way why robert de niro pulled vaxxed the movie from i totally understood it's like because in his case remember we were talking about what to lose in his case it was the legacy he was an academy award winner one of the most respected actors in the history of hollywood and the pharmaceutical industry got to him and said we will turn your legacy into swiss cheese if you do this and you, you, you want to take that chance it's just a stupid documentary it's not worth it it's probably the same thing that they told Shaq. we will Turn your legacy into Swiss cheese. Well, probably, but pretty in, much. In, that's probably just the way they say it. Or yeah. they say, "Take the bag of money or the gun." Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I, 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 for those who want to know the name of the drug that my mom took, it's it was called DES. DES stands for diethyl stilbestrol, and it was an endocrine disruptor that is no longer on the market, thank goodness. And it first came to be in 1938, so it's oh, DES diethyl stilbestrol. So all yeah. sorts of fun stuff that aren't in the market. Look, look up. You want fun stuff that's not on the markup? Look up the term toxic shock syndrome. Oh yes, I remember. I think it was in the 80s, and that came to light with a, a tampon. I forgot the name of it. OB. It was called OB. The tampon OB got blamed for toxic shock syndrome for leaving a tampon up too long in you. And that's yeah. what they said anyway. Yeah, it was bad. Anyway, let's talk about happy stuff. Uh, oh, yeah, we only have a couple more minutes. So gosh, okay. let me go into chat and somebody okay. post some happy stuff because we've talked about some pretty horrendous things today. But, the conference, you know, that's happy. Yes, the conference. You talk about the conference. I'm going to go into the live chat. 
while she's going to chat. Conference, just so you guys know, if you have not heard, if you've been living under a rock for the last oh, nine weeks, the Flat Earth International Conference 2017, the first time in 500 years. It's going to be in Raleigh, North Carolina, this November 9th and 10th. It's being put on by Robbie Davidson and Brian Mullen. Robbie Davidson from Celebrate Truth. Brian Mullen from, was it Force the Line? His YouTube channel, I think it's called... Uh, Force the Line was something that he did. He definitely did, but I think it was Brian Mullen. He, doing. he did have Balls Out Physics, but now Balls out physics. is uh, Brian Mullen. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's going to be great. There's going to be a lot of fantastic presenters there. and But most of all, it is a chance for you. So if you have to lie, cheat, and steal and, and sneak down there, you want to be around people that, that understand what you know and you want to be accepted. In a, there's no feeling like it. I don't think you can put a price tag on it, personally. Be in a room full of people that absolutely agree with everything you think about Flat Earth. Pretty much yeah. anyway. I mean, there's going to be people well, who believe there's a dome. Some people Hell yeah. But I mean, rain, but we all believe that water doesn't stick to a ball. Either way, if we, if we burned a globe, everyone would cheer. So th it's, it's, a, it's going to be a fantastic thing. And I know it's months and months away, but keep it in the back of your head. Use, come up with an excuse to go in November. I don't care what um, you're doing this summer. ODD Reality, who is going to be at the conference, says that shock was planned. I, I, I can see that being the case as well. Sure. It seems like everything is a very complicated chessboard that they've had planned out forever. We were talking about, uh, you know, the Twin Towers before and how those things built in 73 built to built to be knocked down. Um, how long well, they, it was finalized in 73. All of this is a big, giant, enmeshed web. And um, we're figuring it out. But we don't know yeah. what's happening next. That's the thing. Yeah. It's, I mean, I wouldn't have called Shaq. I wouldn't have called. I mean. I wouldn't have uh, predicted Kyrie. I wouldn't have gone. But once I thought about it, I was like, yeah, of course. I still think that baseball players, you know, because the season just started up in baseball, United States, American baseball. Mm -hmm. they're, on the, they're on the road. You think basketball players got free time. Baseball players, they got freaking free time. Yeah, they do. Chewing a lot of... Uh, uh, sunflower seeds. Sunflower seeds or some cases bubble gum or chewing tobacco and basically just sitting on the bench. Yeah. Cleaning their cleats. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm hoping that some other people will come out soon. We'll find out. Either way, the exposure is fantastic and keeps spreading and spreading. If you want to look into the conference, uh, it's fe2017.com. Yep. If you don't remember that, go into the description box of this video or any of my videos in recent times, and there is a link that will get you right there, and you can get tickets for two days for $109. So it's not this crazy expensive thing people are saying. Not that $109 is anything to Well, no, out. but, I mean, seriously, the hotel. And you got to pay to get there. Uh, and yeah, you got to pay to get there. You got to pay for your hotel. But we're doing that too, all of the people invited. So Yeah, I, I love the people who were, that called in la last night and were saying, you know, what about people that are, because you know, they will. There's going to be people that are going to be hitching rides from other people. God, I hope it doesn't turn into like a Woodstock thing. <laughs> no. <laughs> There won't be any mud, so right away. But buses, <laughs> multicolored buses, people holding banners. I thought them. about driving because I've got my flat earth car plate, but I'd rather fly just because ugh, I don't like long drives alone. So Yeah, I know. Well, I guess that wraps up our chats and show. And let me uh, let me say hello to uh, a couple of people here. Uh, Carlos Giancarlo says that Amsterdam, Holland is awakening, but it's still going to take time. So that's good to know. Um, Carl Steinbach is here as well, and uh, a bunch of other people are here. A4 is in our chat who was asking what, if we are still talking about Flat Earth or not. He was making some kind of a joke as to the fact oh, that we don't talk right. about Flat Earth, and we most certainly do, but this is a casual, fun community show where we bounce other uh, bounce ideas off each other. It's not a show where we're showing Flat Earth proofs. Those shows are everywhere, and they're awesome, and this one's not that. We've had yeah, a it, really good it, amount of people uh, viewing at 1.371, I think, but right yeah, now, down yeah, to 350. So I, I appreciate, I appreciate it. And I, I hope that I have said hello to everybody. I've even said hello to A4. So uh, we spoke of Flat Earth at least twice. Uh, Alejandro <laughs> Rubio was saying, how much Flat Earth was talked about today? <laughs> no, it's more than that. And 
you if you get this show, you get this show. If you don't, you don't. It's not for everyone. It's called the secret show for a reason. It's just if you get it, you're in on the secret. And if you don't, it's fine. It's fine with me. Um, that's it. Serious. We must be we must be like bear down and talk about it. <laughs> anyway, it's been wonderful. It's been fabulous. This concludes episode 154. Any final words? Anything coming up that you're gonna be doing? Uh, yeah, I'm playing catch up this week, so I'm I'm just doing promos, and I might I might read the Sports Illustrated article unless Robbie does it first because that's a pretty good article. All right. And other than that, just keeping it flat. All right, and that is what I shall be doing as well, keeping it flat. And until we meet again, hey, keep it flat. Bye. <laughs>